Our industrial partner Lockheed Martin and their spacecraft team up in Denver has been looking at the spacecraft telemetry that we've been receiving for about the last 30 minutes. And uh, from, a, from that initial assessment, of course, everything looks really great on the spacecraft. The spacecraft is doing just fine. And Bud McAnally will tell you a lot more in detail about that in a couple of minutes. Navigating to Mars, as you know, is truly a remarkable achievement. Uh, as you saw in the real-time data some 40 minutes ago, the initial Doppler data showed that we were right on our desired orbit. Pat will give you lots more excruciating detail about how well we're in orbit, and, uh, and you will really enjoy that description. But uh, to all our team here at JPL, uh, to our folks, our partners in Denver, to the Deep Space Network stations around the world, my congratulations to all of you on a job very, very well done. But we have to remember, the real work is yet to come. We are just on the brink of four months of arrow breaking to get to the mapping orbit. So we really have a, a tough job ahead of us, I think, but we're well on the way and uh, everything is going just, just perfect. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Wes Huntress from NASA headquarters. Uh, thanks, Glenn. Uh, I would like to congratulate JPL, and, and I get to do it for the second time in less than three months for a job well done at Mars. Uh, we knocked two spacecraft at Mars. We've got Pathfinder on the surface, and we've got Mars Global Surveyor now uh, in orbit. And that's the state we would like to be in for the next 10 years and beyond. Uh, we have now entered the second era of Mars exploration, the first having ended with the Viking missions. And in this new era, we're going to systematic systematically map this entire planet from orbit. Uh, look for interesting places on the surface, places we want to send our landers. And we'll begin the in-depth exploration of the surface of Mars to understand the history of the planet. Uh, and we are at Mars to stay. Uh, and I congratulate this entire Mars Global Surveyor team, uh, JPL, Lockheed Martin, and all the subcontractors. I would like to thank them and congratulate them for building it cheaper, building it faster, building it on time, building it under budget, and delivering it safely to Mars. My hat is off to them. <laughs> And uh, now I'd like to introduce Ed Stone, the director of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Well, this has obviously been a tremendously exciting summer, uh, two for two. Uh, this is really a validation of the new, new Mars program, which is based on faster, better, cheaper. And uh, we have yet uh, to, uh, to meet some of the challenges of that with this mission. We're using aero braking for the first time to circularize the orbit, an experiment we did several years ago at the end of the Magellan mission, which gave us confidence to baseline this new approach to circularizing the orbit so that we can obtain the highest resolution maps of the entire surface of Mars for the first time. So the experiments are still ahead, but uh, we've met the challenges so far, and I'm confident the team, which has done such a wonderful job to now, up to date, will do it exquisitely in the months ahead, and then we'll have a wonderful year on Mars seeing things that no one has ever seen before and looking for spots that we're going to visit in the not too distant future. Congratulations to all of you. And now Bud McAnally. <laughs> Lockheed Martin, who actually, where they actually built this wonderful spacecraft in just over two years. Thank you. Um, I want to begin by saying that mission success is what this event is all about. As Glenn indicated, the MGS mission is far from over, but the event this evening has enabled the rest of this mission. First and foremost, I want to congratulate the entire MGS team here at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, at NASA, and at Lockheed Martin Astronautics in Denver, and at all of the subcontractors on, on this program whose hardware performs so well. The spacecraft is now in orbit around Mars, and affixed to the spacecraft is a miniaturized copy of the Team MGS signature poster. It contains the, t the signatures of everyone who worked on the spacecraft during the development phase. 
all of you should be very proud of what you've accomplished. Relative to the initial assessment, uh, if you heard the net, you'll know the detail that Glenn referred to is the detail I provide in that attitude, nominal, propulsion, nominal, power, nominal, flight software, nominal, thermal, nominal, CNDH, nominal, telecom, nominal. Nominal is good in this case. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I think it finally, uh, I, the real summary there is everything occurred just as expected. And of course, Pat will go into the details on the orbit. But I'll close by saying this really is rocket science. And this team of rocket sciences have done a super job. Pat? Thank you, bud. We've been listening to the Mars Global Surveyor team expressing their, their joy at seeing that the project is apparently a grand success. Uh, we heard from Glenn Cunningham, who's the project supervisor, says that uh, he couldn't be more pleased that the uh, Global Surveyor is now in orbit. It will now begin its mapping, pro uh, match mapping project rather of the planet surface of Mars. Our morning, the world today, rather, will continue in just a moment. Don't go away.